Hi, everybody. So our 37th video lecture is the lecture that ends the content for the material. I want to start today by uh, passing back some graded homework, so homework five. Um, <clears throat> I have homework fives graded for almost everybody. I think for everybody who's here, I have homework five. So um, <coughs> let's see if I can find okay. Meg. John. Sir. Galvin. And finally, Here's your homework. Thank you very much, sir. Audrey, did you turn it off? I'm just getting off. I'm just trying to create some problems. Usually I create them without trying. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Next bit of information is I want to make sure that we know what our schedule. <coughs> so, first, test two is on Wednesday. 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 I think that's April. Um, is it 29? Okay. We're going to have um, a study session. That's tonight. And Tuesday. That's tomorrow night. And I think what I said was from, what did I say? From 5.30 to 7.30 in this very room. And so what I'm going to do is just go over things with you and uh, study with you. Um, learn definitions, go over proofs with you, that type of thing. Explain things, give examples. Uh, then finally, the final exam is on Wednesday from, I think it's from 12 until 2 in this very room. <clears throat> um, I'm suspicious that I'm going to write an exam that takes you close to two hours. Um, that's what I've seen in the past. And But if you need extra time and you have it to give, I have to give extra time. I can sit in this room longer. So if you need extra time, that's okay. Um, the next thing I want to tell you is in preparation for that final exam, I have a final uh, study guide, and I'm just going to hand it to you. There isn't a lot on here. You're to use your other uh, study guides primarily, but there is a little bit of information. I, I know that all of us can read, but I'm going to read it with you, or at least part of it, emphasize certain things. <clears throat> so this final exam study guide, which I will post on Blackboard eventually, um, eventually probably after this class period, um, said to, to learn all the definitions, okay? But really, what I'm, it's a final exam. And so if, it should emphasize the main points of the course. So the major definitions you can expect to see. Melissa... I am going to say, what does it mean to be a convergent sequence? That's going to be a definition that I will ask you. There's no way that I'm not having the final exam that doesn't have that on there. 
That was a major concept, okay? I imagine I'll ask you what does it mean for a function to, uh, for a function limit, its definition. Continuity. You can just expect those, okay? Cauchy sequences are on there. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so uh, you should be able to state the named theorems that we talked about. So be familiar with those, the named facts. And then I give you a list of things, and John, I think, asked, uh, well, what about, you know, the material that we've covered since uh, the material that's on the test two and since? Okay. So uh, some of that, let's see, you know, I need to go back just for a second and look here. So we'll just take a minute. <clears throat> <clears throat> um, since, the, since what's going to be covered on test two to what we're talking about now, there's algebraic combinations, looks like, of, uh, of continuous functions. That was a big fact that we had. We also had about the boundedness theorem. And if you look at the final exam, that's something that I said I might ask. So on those six things that are listed there, that uh, I will ask at least four of the following. The boundedness theorem is number six. So that's something that was covered not that long ago. So that's something to make sure to know. Uh, <clears throat> even though I'm complete today by doing that maximum theorem, I probably won't ask you about it. So you can say, well, that's good to know how to do it, but he's not going to ask me, so I'm not going to spend lots of time on it. That's okay. Sometimes I don't even get to that part. <clears throat> you, don't, you don't spend too much of it. <clears throat> For the, uh, but know that boundary is there, okay? That's fair game. All right, um, on the last page, uh, again, some of the kind of problem types that we've seen. Uh, we started this course, uh, one of the main things we started this course about real numbers, and we talk about non-empty subsets of real numbers. We talk about that big number, supreme number, upper bounds, and lower bounds. So I might ask you something about that on your final exam. Uh, we've learned about cluster points. We've got a homework assignment back about cluster points. That's probably homework five just now. I gave it back to you. I expect some things about cluster points. Uh, I'm definitely going to ask you to show that a given sequence convergence. Convergence or sequences are something important. I'm definitely going to ask you to show that the limit of a certain function is what it is. And then the continuity of a specifically given function. So you can expect those things to be added. Well, with that being said, are there any questions about what to expect for the upcoming remainder of the class? The oh. so study session tonight, tomorrow night, test on, on Wednesday, on uh, Friday, I hope to have the test graded and hand back to you. We'll spend on Friday just studying for the final exam, going over a few things. You have your questions ready. Your final exam is on. Wednesday the following week. So, Chuck, got any questions? Mm -hmm. Anybody with any questions? Okay. <clears throat> well, let's spend a little time here uh, finishing this last theorem, the max min theorem. So this was in chapter uh, five. <coughs> <coughs> We had covered part of the max min theorem. What does it say? It says the following. It, it says, I'm going to write it maybe different. It says, let L go from A to B into R, where A to B is a closed bounded interval. Suppose F is continuous. On A to B. Then <clears throat> F has an absolute maximum. And 
absolute minimum. on A to B. Okay. So that's our uh, statement. We have said that before. So let's start working about the proof. So uh, here we let F go from A to B uh, <clears throat> into R B continuous. On A to B. And so the construction, and this is the way that I would think of this proof, okay? I would say that there's something that they say to look at, and once you look at this, you know, you, we gain some information, okay? So let's look at this. So uh, we consider, <clears throat> I gave it a uh, name R equal to the set of all f of x's uh, such that x is an element of A to B. These are the collection of output values for f. Let's look at those. <coughs> <coughs> Here, the first thing is to note that since F is continuous, on A to B, then by the boundedness theorem, By the boundedness theorem, f of x is bounded on a to b. That means all the output values are between two numbers. You know, the way that we can see that is that the absolute value of f of x is supposed to be less than or equal to some number m that's positive by the boundedness theorem. So that means that f of x are sandwiched in between m and minus m is out there. So that means that R, come on, that output values, is a bounded um, I'm going to write this non-empty subset of real numbers, script on. So the range of F is bound. We know that. When we say non-empty, the reason it's non-empty, are there any output values? Well, yes, because there are input values. Okay? There are numbers between A and B, including A and B. I mean, one thing you can say is F of A is definitely in that R. It's an output value. So, okay, F of A. So, that means R is non-empty. If you give me some bounded, non-empty subset of R, you know what I know it has? It has a... All bounded subsets of R have a... Supremum and infimum. That's what I was. So, the supremum of R exists. Call it <coughs> S subscript star and the infimum of R. Remember, this R is not the real numbers, okay? It's the range of this function. Exists. <coughs> Call it uh, S subscript star.
times that were useful to become scholars. So that's about what we were. Friday was my anniversary. We didn't. We decided to celebrate it on Saturday. We didn't do very much. But one of the things we did was clean the apartment for the world. Apartment. We've been 16 years, so certain things that have to get done. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so that's what we did. Then I went out to the grocery store and went swimming. And then we also uh, we went to see a high school play, Beauty and the Beast. And they messed up so many times, it was so enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't, uh, I'm not a very artsy person, but I just enjoyed it. They were trying their best, and they were like, you know, in high school and younger. Some of them were younger, I mean, some of them were like real young. You know? And so they did their best, and I enjoyed it. I did my best as an audience member to clap all the time. I enjoyed it. So we had a good time together. One of the things I did on Saturday was go to the grocery store. Yes, I did. I really enjoyed it. I loved it. So, I don't know how other people are at their work, uh, but generally, I'm too intense. I, I, you know, I'm working, I'm trying to get things done, and I think I should mellow out some. And when I go to other people's work, sometimes I'm very playful. So, I'm going to the grocery store, and I have a list of things. I didn't get any things on it. And uh, one of the things that I did get, though, I went to the candy store, and my wife likes a candy called Good and Plenty. Okay. So, so I go to the checkout line and I put that on the conveyor belts last thing. And as I put it on, I tell the cashier, last but not least. And he looks at me and he says, I'm 45 years old. He looks at me and says, sir, do you want to hold those out? And that's what you tell a seven-year-old. Do you want to hold out the candy? And I looked at him and I just went right along. And he smiled and he went, sir, do you want to hold it? Can you not wait? I said, oh, no, sir, they're not for me. They're for my wife. This is our anniversary. Good plenty. That's what I'm getting my wife for our anniversary. <laughs> so he starts laughing. And he said, well, it's good to spare no expense. I said, well, sir, it's not as impressive as you might think. They were discounted. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what happened. <laughs> All right. So, <clears throat> so we, we were working, and we got this S superscript star and S subscript star. And, you know, that's the supremum and the minimum of our output. But just because you have a supremum and an ephemum uh, for the output values, it doesn't mean, um, just because you have a, a, a supremum or an ephemum for a set, it doesn't mean that they were in the set. Okay, to be an absolute max, that means you've got to attain that supremum. So there's got to be an x in A to B says that f of x equals to s superscript star. And likewise, there's got to be an, another x, maybe, in the A to B, says that F of that other X is equal to S subscript star, the infinity. Okay. So that's what our jobs are, is to show that they, they're input values. Well, I'm just going to work for getting the supremum, but um, we must show, to show, um, aha, we will show there exists an X superscript star element of A to B. <coughs> such that f of x superscript star is equal to s uh, star, which equals to the supremum of the output value. Uh, thus, f of x star is the absolute max. Okay. Um, The existence of X subscript star element of A B uh, such that F of X subscript star equals to S and theme S subscript star will be left to the students. Unless we run out of no, uh, run out of things to do, and we'll have to report you later. <laughs> this was one of my worst plays from Professor Sherry Gale. She would write that on the board, left to students. That meant it was a homework problem, and we'd have to do it when I was a student. That happened all the time in her classes. The job was just like this. 
You guys just go ahead and show me you can do it. <clears throat> but it's not a homework problem for you. <coughs> <coughs> okay, we've got to get that x subscript star, superscript star, such that alpha bit is equal to s superscript star. That's what we're looking for. Okay. Well, here's what we know. Note, since s superscript star equals the super bar. Okay, so the supremum of all the alpha values. Then if you take a little bit away from s superscript star. Okay? So what is that? It's the supreme. So what's the supreme? It's the least upper bound. So if you go a little smaller, so S superscript star is the smallest upper bound. So if you go a little smaller, it's not an upper bound. Then, for each end, element has some numbers. S superscript star minus one end, that's a little bit smaller, is not an upper bound. For R, what was R? Just to remind ourselves. It's all the alpha values. F of X such that X is an element of beta B. <coughs> okay, there's something in the set bigger. That's right. So, but the way to be in the set, you have to be an output value. That means there has to be an, or an input, input value. value that generates that output value. So there exists an X of N, element of A to B, such that F of X of N, all right, now this is not an upper bound. So that means, if you will, I'll rewrite it this way. S superscript star minus one of N, is less than f of x of n. Because s superscript star minus 1 over n was not an upper bound. So there's got to be something from the set bigger. Okay. Thus, we have formed <coughs> a sequence of functions. Uh, a sequence of real numbers, I shouldn't say functions, so a sequence of real numbers x sub n that is a subset of a to b. So everything in this sequence is an item in between a and b. What that means is every term of the sequence is bigger than or equal to A, but yet less than or equal to B. That means each term of the sequence is bounded by some number. Well, if you're bounded, what do we know about every bounded sequence? Say that again. Not the correct answer. It's okay. So what? I say things that are wrong all the time. Sometimes I do it on purpose. Has a convergent subsequence? It has a convergent subsequence. Uh, Dalvin, can you name a sequence that's bounded that doesn't converge? You didn't have to. Can somebody else? Yeah, that right. Uh, series, uh, sequence. The minus one and n. That's a good one. So by the Balzano, that's what it was, John. Balzano, Weierstrauss, <clears throat> uh, theorem. There exists a subsequence, <clears throat> a, I should say, a convergent subsequence. Convergent subsequence um, of x sub n, say x sub n sub k. Okay. 
converging. So if, it com is it, if it's converging, it converges to something. So let's say converging to X. Now, what do I know about the X sub N sub Ks? Well, they're in between A and B. They're in between A and B. And if it converges, X sub N sub Ks converge, then what it converges to has to be in between A and B. You know, uh, <clears throat> let's, let's, let's call this a little bit more suggestive. Let's call it X superscript star. I think that might be the thing we're looking for. So X superscript star um, is an element of A to B. <coughs> now, one thing we hadn't used is continuity, remember? Well, we have used it because it gave us the boundedness. <coughs> so, uh, or since... At, uh, since f is continuous, I'll say it this way, on a to b, then f is continuous at x superscript star. <coughs> So, um, so uh, one thing that I can tell you is that, uh, well, it's continuous. Um, all right, give me a second. I need a second to think about this. I think what I can say is a uh, sense. X superscript star is uh, an element of A to B, a disclosed bounded interval. It's connected. Then X superscript star is a cluster point. Cluster points, cluster point of this set, A to B. So, since it's a cluster point, then by the sequential criterion for uh, for uh, for continuity, um, the limit as k goes to infinity of f of x sub n sub k has got to be equal to f of x superscript star. All right. Is that okay with everybody? So that's why. Right. So f of x superscript star is equal to this limit. Is that okay with everybody? I'm going to stop. We'll get everybody to say. <clears throat> What I want to show is that this part is S superscript star. I know it's, it's supposed to be the same thing as this. Okay? I want to show this part is S superscript star. But I'm going to wait. Does anybody want to ask anything? What language am I speaking in? Is it okay? Does somebody want to ask anything? Sometimes it's not okay and you have to think about it a little while. Well, um, note um, L X sub N sub K. Okay, this guy. Now, what do I know about it? Look, this were output values. 
that are part of this alpha base of X of F of X of N. How were those X events chosen? They were chosen. How are these X events of K's chosen? They're, they're part of the X events. The X events being chosen such that they're uh, <coughs> bigger than S superscript star minus, it was 1 over N, but in this case it'd be 1 over N sub K. Is that okay? That's what it is. Now wait a minute. What's S star? What was S star? The supreme one. Of the output value. This is an output value. Each one of these n sub k's, x sub n sub k's, is an output value. So each one of the f of x sub n sub k's are going to be compared to s superscript star. Less than or less than or equal to. Is that okay? Here's what I want to say. No. The limit as k goes to infinity of s star minus 1 over n sub k. Okay? So let's talk about that for a second. Well, look, s star is a fixed number. So what does it converge to? S star. S star. Now, 1 over n sub k is a subsequence of 1 over n. Is that okay? And 1 over n converges to 0. So every subsequence of it converges to 0. Is that okay with everybody? So this guy got to converge to 0. And so these are each convergent sequences of real numbers. If you subtract them, it's a convergent sequence of real numbers. And what it converges to is the limit of each one of them subtracted from each other. So this should converge to s star minus 0, which equals to s star. So the limit of the left-hand side was what? S star. Now wait a minute. I also know the limit as, as k goes to infinity of S star. Well, that's just a constant. That's the right-hand side, right? What's it equal to? S star. S star. So I got this sequence in between them. A sequence of real numbers. And if the smaller sequence converges to a number, and the bigger sequence converges to the same number, then the middle sequence has to diverge. No, sir. Converge, as John says with a smile on his face, converge to the same number. By what fact? Dalvin said the right thing. He said by the squeeze theorem. I'm going to be a little bit more specific. It's the squeeze theorem for sequences. For sequences. So the limit as k goes to infinity, I know I'm running out of here, of f of x sub n sub k, that's equal to s uh, superscript star. But wait a minute, that's the same thing as f of x star. So that means f of x star equals to s superscript star. Is that okay? That's what I'll write up here. So, f of x has an absolute max. Well, let me write it down this way. Let me, let me be very cautious here. Okay. So, first of all, if f of x star is equal to the supremum of all the output values, that means for all x element of a to b, f of x is going to be less than or equal to f of x superscript star. Because this is the supremum, is that okay? Of all the output values. 
And if you give me uh, some output value that's bigger than or equal to all the other output values, that makes that output value the, we wouldn't say necessarily supreme, we call it something else. We call it the, I mean it is, but we wouldn't call it that. We call it the, what, what did we just defined last time? What are we trying to show happens in this theorem? Think about what's your theorem. What's it say? That's right. What you said was correct, but it wasn't consistent with the terminology in this theorem. But it is correct. So is the absolute max of f on a. That, that's all the theorem that I'm going to do, all the proof that I'm going to do. There's still something left to do. There's, I mean, this is like half the proof, a little bit more than half the proof. What's the other half? The other half is to show that there was some x subscript star, such that f of it was equal to as what well, was equal to the infimum of the output values. Okay. So how did we? How would we show that? It would be very similar. But remember, instead of instead of the S subscript, uh, superscript star minus 1 over n, we worked with it. Remember that? Okay? And we said that's not an upper bank. Remember that? Well, instead of what we're going to be work, working with, we're going to be working with S subscript star plus 1 over n. And so we'll say that, uh, so we have S subscript star is the greatest lower bank. So anything bigger than it is not a lower bound. So this won't be a lower bound. Okay? This won't be a lower bound. So there'll be things smaller than it. Is that okay? So what you'll get is you'll get these f of x sub n sandwiched in between here and uh, s. Yeah. yeah, that's right. You work from there, just like what we did before. Is that okay? That's what happens. Okay. Listen, that's the content for the course. I'm done with the class. Um, are there any questions of me? Do we know what's happening for us for the remainder of the term? Next time is test. Tonight we're going to have a study session tomorrow. I'm going to have a study session. I'm going to ask you definitions. The test is going to look uh, you know, kind of like test one. I'm going to ask you definitions. Problem one, uh, it's going to say state these definitions. Problem two is going to say state these names back. Then I'm going to have you do some uh, proving of some theorems, some of which I've asked you in class, if not all. And then the last thing, well, don't, don't forget to expect uh, some problems having to do with showing that a limit of a function exists, showing continuity of a function, proving that something tends to infinity or minus infinity, some true-false questions, determining if the sequence is Cauchy or not, Cluster point questions. That's what you can expect. Does anybody want to ask anything? Again? Okay. If there are no questions of me, if there aren't any, then the last thing I want to do today is give you your give you the chance to evaluate the class. And so as I pass these out, stop the video and let you do uh, what you want to here. We're done. I'm done. I'm going to leave. So uh, as I give you these, I would like to tell you something. When you're filling these out, you say whatever you want. And I don't get them back till after the grades have been assigned. And I, I, they are not in your handwriting. I have no idea who says what. Here's what I'd like. If I did something that was good, say so. If I did something that you didn't like, Say so, so I know not to do it again. And if I didn't do something you wish I had of them, say so, so that maybe next time I will do it. Okay? If you have an electronic device that you can use to access this, go ahead. If you don't, you can use a computer later on. Okay? Look, there's a lot more here left for me to fill in.